The recipes brewed on this show are provided by homebrewsupply.com. Fresh ingredients, best prices, and same-day shipping. Make your brew day better with homebrewsupply.com. Entertaining shows with content that spreads information and sparks discourse throughout the community. This is the Pearl Media Network. Man, that was long. I'm so sorry. Now that we're doing... <laughs> I can see we're not, What are we recording today? Can I just make this clear right up the front? Welcome yeah, to... I rest- was trying to figure out what the heck that was. I'm so sorry. <laughs> White noise music. Uh, I mean, it is. I, I, something I kind of listen to to try to sleep. Guys, we're just, ch- we're just chilling. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Recipe Recap and Review. This is our new show where we're going over the recipes that we brew and talk about the uh, brew day experience, and then we drink it. And if we have a commercial example of it, we compare it to that. We are uh, a day late this week, but only because it's been a crazy busy week. Todd's been busy uh, out of town helping his pop. James has been busy running. I don't even know how many hats he's been wearing this week in the company. But no, I would I would say that that the the pity goes to Joe upstairs. No kidding, yes. right? Yes. He has been absolutely snowed under with orders, which is a good problem to have. It is right we, now for yeah. sure, and people are people are ordering a lot more because they're staying home. Uh, which is the smart thing to do. It's good to be home. And when you're home, uh, it's good. A good distraction is brewing some beer. And so uh, Todd actually brewed some beer for us. He he mailed them to us. Oh, hold on. You got, if you, remember, because we're remote and we don't have multi cameras in the traditional sense that we did the last two episodes, Todd up there in that corner holding his, I need to pour mine. Todd, why don't you talk about uh, what you brewed? Uh, okay. So I've got both here. There's, they are the same recipe, a, a my first pale ale, and one of them is extract and one of them is all grain. So, and what I've done here is I have A and B, which they're looking at A and B. And yes, Josh, uh, the, the, both of you, your A and your B are the same thing. So <laughs> that's not funny. Um, that's not funny. So uh, anyway, we're gonna. What I thought I would do, if if you don't mind me taking this tasting over a little bit, Josh. What I was going to do is have you both taste the beers, and then, Josh, I want you to tell me your thoughts on each one. Okay. And then I'm going to get James to do the same thing. Deal. So let me first go over. I have them poured. Um, Todd, it's a beautiful-looking beer, man. It is. I, I have a, I am pretty confident just by looking at it. I know which one's which. But uh, let me try. Here's A. I put A in my Fuchsian glass, and I put B in my Goulash Alt glass. So let me try A. Yeah, that's a solid pale ale, my friend. J- um, let me try B. Oh, I know. Yeah. Okay. I like- I, I, I love them. I, wait, I forget the order you asked me to say. We're waiting on James or you want me to tell you which one I think is which, and then we'll discuss it. No, no, I, I don't want one. you to tell me it's which. I, first, I want you to just tell me what you think about each one. Okay. A has more body to it, in my opinion. Yep. A has Absolutely. It, it A has A has some structure. Uh, there, It's... um. <laughs> B is is delicious and, and straightforward, but it's missing that mouthfeel that yep. A has. And it ha- um, I always use the word biscuit for that afterbite. That, that's the wrong way to describe it. But A has that solid, crisp, pale ale finish where B's is a little fainter to my palate, in my opinion. Okay. James? Yeah, it's definitely a body issue. A uh, B B is is a is a good beer, but A has more going for in the mouth feel than B. So I, the I hop was, amount's almost identical, but it's just yeah. the body. See, I, I that's interesting because I was expecting James to say something different. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that. So um, I, yeah. I I actually thought in my mind I think A is actually much hoppier. Really, you don't feel that? I don't. Mm, no. No, for me, I, no, I agree with James. Where the di- you know, like, y'all didn't try 
you, I noticed you tried a first, if you tried B first and then tried a with a clean palate, you'll definitely taste the difference. Okay. Maybe that's what it was. Mm. Yeah. It's gotta be what it is. The hop amounts. If you taste B first, if you taste B first and you haven't had a yet, and then you try a, a goes wham, a lot more hops. Like, I don't know, man. Okay. I mean, I mean, you're right. I, maybe I screwed it up. Maybe you should have told us to drink B first, but, um, <laughs> A, and I also, know which was and also and B, too, carbonation, so. dude. A is nailed it. Holy moly, B's yeah. not bad, but B, yeah, but they're both they're both carbonated. They, they, really oh well. yeah, way better you than know, I carbonate. <laughs> and the reason B B is a little see, I think your B is probably less carbonated than the one that I'm drinking because I just pulled mine fresh out of the keg. Yeah, and yeah. You, when I bottled that one, it didn't quite have enough carbonation because I I let it sit for a few more days, and now they're both carbonated almost identically. So. uh Anyway, that James, I think your phone's going off. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know I don't have a ringer like that. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, okay. So, so before we get into the the, I, I want to get it out of the way before we have you describe the the style, the brew day, and, and we talk about the recipe. Is a the all grain? Because that's my guess. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So is this okay? And let, let's get this out of the way. Is the you nailed your numbers on both brew days? There was nothing that happened during the extra brew day that you're like, oh, maybe that explains why it has a little no, less body. Not, not at all. But except again, I don't know why to me, and I know y'all don't taste it as much, but to me, they're like night and day. Like A, it seems like it's a lot hoppier. And I wasn't sure if maybe the recipe was slightly different or if there was some other factor that I was getting that perception of that more hops from. I don't get I don't get that big a difference in hop in hop flavor. The only thing I can tell is the body difference. Okay. As in color too, dude, you nailed it, man. Um, yeah, they're identical. I mean, they are, the 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 all grain. I mean, I don't want to take the words out of your mouth, but to me, the all grain is much better. I agree. No, I but agree. Yeah. Look, if you hold I, it up, I ran out of the all grain and I started grain. drinking the extract and I'm really enjoying the hell out of it. Look, yeah, that's a great beer. And that's, that just goes to show you can, you can absolutely make a gr- a good drinkable all grain yeah, the, and a good drinkable extract or mini mash, which is what this would be. Yeah, dude. And the, and the, here's the, the, the color and clarity that's of the all grain. Look at my, look at me in between there. You can see me through it. Yeah, oh my bright but, beer. And also though, through the extract as well. Look at this. It is not as clear, but dude, it's pretty clear, man. Uh, is that? Y'all don't want to hear that. What is that? What is that? <laughs> that was my phone ringing. Oh, thank ringing goodness. through the video? <laughs> so yeah. we both did it. Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah, That's that, pretty bad. That, because I have my Google Jinx Hangouts up. Yeah. G- <laughs> That's what I did for keeping Google Hangouts up. But anyway. Uh, yeah, t- it's, uh, it's very interesting to me. I, I enjoyed brewing both of them. One is an all grain. One is an extract. Um so I would say this, I, after brewing the, an extract, my, my, th- what I've been saying for years is it's so much easier to brew an extract mm-hmm. yeah. that it makes sense to brew one because you can brew them in a few hours and you're done. I don't know though. It, it still took a long time to do it. By the time I started trying to boil the water on the stove, which takes forever, of course, yeah. And all the other things. And, and Josh, you were there. It, it took us a while to brew it. It did. Um, yeah, this we, is the one you did the video on, correct? Yep. Yes. Yes. Okay. And when we brew on our big system, it it definitely takes longer, but you get three times as much beer. So it would be hard for me to justify doing an extract uh, when I have a nice system that I can brew three times as much beer on, if that makes sense. Absolutely. And let's talk about the, the recipe itself, too, and not just the difference that, you know, obviously one called for LME or DME or both. And mm-hmm. and the other was right, right. just uh, you, you know, you, know, you milled the grains, brought them back. You did all the all grain stuff. But it, that- it, we did change this one slightly because we were doing the video and we thought it was very important to show people that have never brewed before the difference between DME, dry malt extract, LME, liquid malt extract. We actually changed the recipe just enough to where we could use both because we have very few recipes where it does use both. And uh, I don't think that that probably changed the taste at all, but it, but we did do that. So we did change the recipe slightly. That's what I was going to ask because right now, James, like it calls for eight pounds of pale, two pounds mm-hmm. of Vienna, and then 12 ounces of caramel at 40 Lovey Bond, and then eight yeah. ounces of carob pills. 
Um, is that what, what, what is it between that of the all grain bill and the extract, which is, you know, some DME, some LME, mm-hmm. and then the two pounds of Vienna and the eight ounce of carapils and the 12, like, what is it that, that, what is it in the mouthfeel that made the difference for like, can, can LME. I think in or- creating, and it was, first of all, and I say this all the time, when you're creating the sugars through all grain, you're mashing because of the temperatures that you're mash at, you can control mouthfeel and, and you can create those. Cause I think we, this was, this was mashed at 152, correct? Uh, yeah, I believe so. I just, so I just pulled up the extract recipe cause he was talking about that and I had the all grain one up. <laughs> Put Let your readers on. Be, That's going <laughs> to create I could, a little, could, little yeah. better mouthfeel and a little bit of body in that beer that you wouldn't get with a completely fermentable base malt, like a LME or DME. Yeah. Cause that's what I always wonder yeah. because I know on, on extract kits or partial mash, which is all cat connection cells. And so that's the mm-hmm. only experience I have with extract partial mash kits. Um, even though the steeping grains made a huge difference in like the color and, and some of the other qualities of the final beer, there was always still now, you know, we've brewed Kolsch on both systems at my house an extract kit and yeah. uh, all grain, the all grain. Again, I, I always wonder how much of it is placebo and a mental thing where I'm like, Oh, this one is so much better in it, it. And yeah. as opposed to objectively why it's better. But I, I think like with this one, for me, they're both solid. The, both of mm-hmm. these came out incredibly Very well. Good, yes. Uh, but, but I can't, man, for the life of me, I can't, you can't beat that mouthfeel on, on a, right. a yeah, that is, but we've gotten, we've gotten accustomed to, to, preferring that in the beer that we brew right it's a beautiful looking beer i can it, read your shirt is it. It, isn't that incredible yeah. it's it's what look at it that. is it's nuts so yeah. you know i here's what i would probably do if i was going back if if todd said james you could never brew any more all grain batches i would do extract but i would i would mini mash the grains technically mash to try to see if i couldn't get some of that body back interesting you know? You know, that'd be worth trying because I know normally we steep for what, 20 minutes, I think is what we've got in the in the uh, recipe instructions. So I'm such a nerd about it. I would probably try to hold at 152 for a full hour to see if that makes a difference. It'd be worth trying out to see if there's a big difference in that. A lot of people, the reason why they want to do extract brewing is that you don't have to wait that long. You can do it a lot quicker than you would normally if you were doing all grain. And I totally get that. This is good. This is very good beer for as little time as it takes to brew it, you know. I agree. Todd, what um did you I mean, for your fermentation, because people after the first few episodes that we've done, uh people have asked me after the fact like, "Hey, why don't you let us know not just like the numbers you hit, but the the equipment you use for brewing and after the fact like fermentation, what you use?" I don't remember on your all grain kit, but on the extract, you we went straight into buckets. Okay. Yeah. So I went into buckets, uh, left them in buckets until they were, you know, where I would normally do a first fermentation and then uh, switch them up basically when they stop bubbling and they've been sitting for a few days. Now you, you can obviously take your gravity reading. My, my theory on that is it is what it is. And, <laughs> and I've brewed enough to where I don't necessarily take a gravity reading, but when I go from first fermentation to second fermentation, uh, but, but you certainly can, I put them in glass carboys, put them in a fridge and, uh, and cold crashed them for two or three weeks, maybe even longer. And that's where I think where the clarity came from on the, on the extract on the all grain. We, I brewed it on the three tier system. We brewed 15 plus gallons and, uh, put it actually in the, in the fermenter, uh, that, that, that has, that's gl- a glycol. And left it in there. Of course, I didn't cool it down except to, I think it was 68 degrees maybe in the first fermentation, if I remember. And then let it completely finish out like I did in the buckets and then cold crashed it at that point and and let it clarify for a couple of weeks. And I know part of the show, like what we've been doing is following. I, I, I just wanted to, we've been following the recipes as they're written. And the thing that you changed in the extract was just for the video's sake to, yes. uh, you changed out some of the, uh, DME, you changed out some of it for, for, uh, I mean, pardon me, you changed out some of the, yeah, DME is what's on the recipe for LME, right? 
Yes, yes. Did that, what kind of difference would a DME or LME make in the final beer that people can, uh, like, maybe a rule of thumb like oh i can tell that this used dme instead of lme or it used both because of insert here yeah so i think that there will probably be uh, sticks and stones thrown at me for saying this <laughs> yeah. yeah but thank goodness i don't get those emails josh does uh <laughs> i don't i can't tell any difference i mean I, if i use lme if i use dme to me if I mix it all right and it's the same and, I, and I'm using the same, getting the same amount of sugars through my calculations, I, I, I have never noticed a, a difference in them. James, is I, it- I can tell you this, that uh, I think if you're wanting to get it hit a certain specific gravity and you're switching between dry, which is a little more heavy concentrated than liquid, that there is calculators online that'll help you convert to the exact amount you need to hit that gravity. Cause liquid malt is, is not as, concentrated is dry malt extract and we and we definitely did that but i guess what i'm saying or what the question would be do you think if you hit the same amount of sugars do you yeah. think there'd be any taste difference between the two if they're both equally as fresh in other words if they're the same uh date produced you shouldn't taste the difference i wouldn't think right on and dme stores better right that's always been my it understanding does. yeah you can put it in the freezer and in fact, I had some in the freezer, and it was still. It's got to be a real, a solid, good, cold freezer, but it'll 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 hold better frozen than it will thawed out. But it, the only thing about a dry malt extract, it stores good, but man, if you ever open it and expose it to any kind of moisture whatsoever, it'll turn into a rock. It will. It's terrible if it gets yeah. wet. It's that even when you're pouring it in. Yeah. Like you're, you're stirring and you're pouring yeah. it in the steam will start to make it into chunks. So you, you got to kind of be careful that you don't get too much steam on it. That's yeah. Cause it'll noticed. actually close up the opening of the bag you're trying to pour out of. It's amazing. It, it's well, it's powdered sugar. Right. It is, yeah, so. totally. I was about to say, it didn't like powdered sugar. Yeah. Uh, so wrapping it up because this is a, the, the our, our recipe recap show, like 20 minutes or less. Um, I, I let's give our final thoughts, Todd. Both beers turned out incredible. I, I'm going to have to say, though, I want to... I, ca- I think my final thoughts, <laughs> thoughts speak for themselves. Man, we're about to record this week's episode of Homebrew Happy Hour. I was go. like, I'll save some for that. Todd's just... Oh, I'll go. get a kegerator full <laughs> of it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will say this, dude. They're both phenomenal. They're both great. They but A, you. your all grain, I want a keg of that, dude. Holy moly. It's it's, it's all gone. I just drank... We just drank the last three bottles of it. It's gone forever. No, Until we brew it again. My yeah. first pale ale is a hell of a recipe, dude. It is good. Wow. It's a great recipe. I'm very impressed with it. You know, it's my first pale ale. It's supposed to be a beginner recipe. So when I, when I, I'm trying to brew all the recipes on the site again, and I was like, uh, yeah, I got to brew it, but damn, it's a go-to now. It's a it damn is. good recipe. It really it's a good is. session beer too. I was going to say, yeah. and, and James, in your opinion, uh, for your final thoughts, uh, mm-hmm. I would say, you know, I'm with you now. I've been converted hops. I don't like getting punched in the face with hops. I think right. this recipe does it pretty well, man. I think it's solid. It's a solid recipe. It's as much hops as I care to drink. I love it. I, I, I was able to get a keg of it from Todd, and I love it. I think it's about, if I remember right, and it's on the label. I should have brought the label over here. <laughs> it's around 6%, maybe a little bit less. This batch may have been... Slightly under six percent, five point eight. Okay, so or something like maybe that. not so much a session beer at six percent, but it's a good go-to regular. You know, everybody mm-hmm. has their own regular beer they like to brew. Uh, that could be definitely one of those. Absolutely. Sure. Well, Todd, thank you for shipping it to me. I'm glad we could get this week's episode filmed. This is my first pale ale. It's available at Homebrew Supply. Dot com. You can use our promo code HHH and get 5% off of your order at homebrewsupply.com. Right now, ending this week is the recipe kit sale. So if you go to homebrewsupply.com, pick up my first pale ale, brew it, let us know what you think. If you did all grain, if you did the mini mash, however it turned out, let us know. Or if you have a favorite kind of beginner pale ale recipe, leave it in the comments below. Thank you for joining us, and we're going to record uh, the next uh, episode of Homebrew Happy Hour right now. So thank you, guys. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>